Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett, and today we are going to talk about this guitar, the Fender Ventera 50s Telecaster. This is a great Telecaster that's designed to be a relatively budget-friendly version of an old-style Telecaster, similar to some of the first ones ever made. We're going to dive in here and hear some tones from the neck pickup, talk about the guitar a little bit, and then hear tones from the other pickup settings. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Spotify, and I hope you enjoy. All right, so the Ventera series is relatively new, and it replaced the Classic series. Fender, for a while, has had the Classic series, the Classic Player series, and the idea of those series is that they're going to give you a vintage reissue, but they're made in Mexico, so they're a bit more budget-friendly than an American reissue or a custom shop. Now, the vintage-style guitars were very, very sought after, and even though they had some little idiosyncrasies, they've always been kind of viewed as having a lot of mojo, and they were the first Fenders that people fell in love with and of course one of the cornerstones of electric guitar history so this is designed to be like one of the earliest telecasters now it's not 100 percent for instance it doesn't have the bass circuit like the original telecasters would have this has a standard pickup selector the original telecasters had this really bassy muffled circuit if you switch to the neck spot then the neck was in the middle and then the bridge was in the bridge position this one has a more standard selector switch so you've got the bridge middle and neck you've already heard the neck pickup sounds great. Now these are 50s voiced pickups. This has an older body. It has a big fat U-shaped neck. All vintage style appointments. So you've got the classic ashtray bridge with the three brass saddles. You've got up here on the headstock, you've got the angled Fender Telecaster logo along with the circular string tree and vintage style tuners. Uh, all maple neck single ply pick guard. This is in a really beautiful two-tone sunburst finish, which I particularly like. The pickups sound nice. They have a rich tone to them. They have a unique flatness to them. Now, when I say flat, I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. I mean they have an evenness to them. Some pickups have a lot of depth, but can also be sort of spiky. This has this nice kind of woody tone that sort of just sits right nice and evenly. So whether you dig in or whether you play lightly, they dynamically sort of balance out really well, which can be great for playing and recording because you don't get a lot of over the top. Now, they're not crazy high gain pickups, but again, 
think of this as a vintage style guitar. And I do want to talk about some of the little idiosyncrasies of this. And I don't want you to necessarily view them as a bad thing, but just know what you're getting because vintage guitars were not like modern guitars. So for instance, one thing, this is something that has always stood out to me. There's no truss rod adjustment up here on the headstock. The truss rod adjustment is under the heel of the neck. Another thing would be with the vintage style wiring, you get a little bit more noise from the pickups like when you take your hands off the strings. Now, the reason that I bring this up, again, it's not necessarily a criticism because they're doing it to be historically accurate. This is a great guitar. This is a guitar that, uh, you know, professionals could use for gigging and recording, but at where it sits, it's also a guitar that a lot of beginner to intermediate and, you know, above intermediate players are going to look at to graduate from from some of their earlier guitars. Something like a Vintera is a great guitar because it's more budget friendly, but if you're not as experienced with guitar, you might not know these things about the history of them. You might not know these things about, you know, what old guitars were like. So I'm telling you that more to make you aware of what you're buying as opposed to saying it's a bad thing. Is it a bad thing? You know, it depends. It depends on what you need. For instance, here in Maine, we get major humidity swells, which can make the guitar neck bow and warp a lot. It gets very humid here in the summer and it gets very dry in the winter. Well, that does make having the truss rod adjustment under the heel more of an issue for me. I don't mind it because I like the classic style guitars, but it is a lot easier for me to have the truss rod adjustment up at the headstock. The three brass saddles, kind of classic Telecaster thing, they don't intonate all that well because they, you have one saddle that's for two strings, so you can't adjust each string individually. You have to adjust two strings together. Now, there are compensated saddles that you can get. There's also other wiring you can get. You can get different pickups and things, but those are now we're talking about modifying the guitar. Now, all these things are what made the Telecaster what it is. It's a great guitar. It's uh, sort of charming in its bare bones. You know, it's a, it's a slab of wood. It's, it's a little sharper on your forearm. But that's, again, part of the charm of it. It's, it's part of the fact that this was one of the very first electric guitars, solid body electric guitars ever made. And likewise with the pickups. The pickups are much lower gain. Pickups weren't designed to drive amps before. Nowadays we get these you know massively high gain pickups that can just absolutely slam and get a lot of distortion. You can turn up the drive on these pickups and it doesn't really get all that heavy, but it has a richness, a really nice character, kind of a vintage these pickups have a little bit of this vintage kind of compression to them, particularly the bridge pickup I found where it squishes the notes together a little bit, has that great classic telly twang, has that nice sort of woody telly neck tone that I really like. And the big fat neck is something that really sells me. I like a nice fat neck. It's not uncomfortable. It's not like you're holding a baseball bat, but there's sort of a lot of meat to the neck. You're really holding onto a guitar neck with that U shape. So again, you just heard it on the neck position. Next, we're going to do the middle position and then the bridge. Today, I'm plugging into a Fender Princeton Reverb and using a Maxon 808 Overdrive for my drive tones. And again, you'll notice that it's not really a particularly heavy drive. You can certainly turn up the gain and, and get more distortion out of it if you really push it. But you have to push the gain harder with this guitar than you would with other guitars in order to get the same level of gain. What you tr get in the trade-off for that is you get really rich sounding pickups with a lot of character and a lot of classic vibe to them. So let's dive back in with some tone. Let us know what you think. Do you play the Vintera guitar? Do you have one? What's your impression of it? Do you like it? Do you use it? Do you have one of the older classic or classic player guitars? Or is this something that you're looking to get into? Please let us know down below. I'm Jack Fawcett. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.